Blech. This is going nowhere. I can't see with these on. I had to find something else to do today. Let's see what's over here. Hmm. Let's see what we got here. We got the bondage. Not in that anymore. We got the drugs. Um, not today. We got the uh, Stephanie Meyer knockoffs. Blech. Let's see, we have, um, what, what is this? <gasps> so how was Cabo? Oh, your boyfriend died? How unfortunate. Digger, do you know what this is? It's, it's a book. Wrong, this is the ultimate. Black Bible! Within these pages are the means to godhood. I say we enact these rituals and meet these demons. Have you taken your meds? What's your point? The last time you didn't take your meds, you thought you could fly. So? The other time you didn't take them, you thought the snapping turtles were your dentist. They were calling my name and waving toothbrushes. And the, and the other time, you thought you were Tijuana. It's the happiest place on earth and I'm the happiest man. The science is right there. So are you on your meds? No, I don't need my meds because we have this book. This book sounds like a bunch of claptrap. Ball the dash. Here, see for yourself. It's dedicated to a bunch of fake sounding people and a demon named Pledurabo. Give me that. It's totally legit, I tell you. And just to prove it, we'll enact one of the rituals. How's that sound? Well, I don't have one of my bi-weekly purgings, so I guess why not? Excellent. All right. I understand. Snekronomikin cannot possibly fail. Yeah. Almighty oh, God Ishtar, I beseech upon you to bathe me entrance to your first, most hallowed gate. Stab me. What? Stab me! No! Stab me, you impudent strumpet! No! <laughs> Nothing happened. Stab me harder! No, this book is clapped! Get back here! I will research and be vindicated! Make a fool out of me, will it? Well, I'll find it. No. Oh, I must warn the viewership. Who remembers this guy? That's right, Cthulhu. It's quite popular among the nerddom and the popular cultural sex and what have you that your kids do. Now, who remembers this guy? That's right. It's Howard Phillips Lovecraft. He's the guy that actually created him, known as H.P. Lovecraft to his fans. But you know he created more things than that, right? People get to Cthulhu and then they just stop. Look at all this other stuff he created that I'm gonna pull across the screen. Yeah! And yeah! And that one! And that one! And these ones! All this stuff that he made. And people, they just don't pay attention to it. They get to Cthulhu and they stop. There are so many things based off Cthulhu, it's ridiculous. But there was one thing he was popular enough to propagate, and it was the resurgence of one of the darkest and most ancient churches of occultism in the world. Not all occultism is bad, of course. There's Wicca. Nobody should have a problem with Wicca unless they're, you know, misogynist. But the same cannot be said for the cult started by Alastair Crowley, an Englishman born to a very conservative English household known as the Plymouth Brethren in the early 20th century. He broke from them at a young age and turned to Western esotericism. And so egocentrical was he that he actually believed that his birth was so auspicious it made him a god, a physical reincarnation of the Ancient Ones. Dark things were said about Aleister Crowley. At one time, two lodges he created in Germany claimed membership to Adolf Hitler and also claimed to be magically responsible for the Third Reich. For the new world order that Alistair wanted to create, it could not come about without destruction, the lights of which the Nazis caused in the Holocaust. Most of this is just rumor and conjecture. However, two things are true. One, Alistair and his cults were touring Europe at the same time H.P. Lovecraft was writing. Two, at that moment in history, five copies of the Necronomicon came to light in Europe. Now, the Necronomicon is a shady volume, to be sure. Written in the 8th century by the mad Arab Abdul Azarid, who believed himself touched by the Babylonian gods, the most destructive and non-benevolent pantheon that humanity ever thought of. He went blind, penned down everything he heard, and created ways to get into their heavens and to their hells, and then he vanished, his manuscripts along with them. They resurfaced several times in history, and most potently in that post-World War I era. 
H.P. Lovecraft drew upon them for his literary success, while Alistair Crowley believed that he could create his new world order with these dark volumes. But you know what the most amazing thing is? That book never existed. There was never a black Bible written at that time. There was never a mad Arab. The Babylonian mythos hasn't been touched since astrology. And yet the book exists. What happened was that H.P. Lovecraft was such a phenomenal writer that his fans took what he made up and ran with it. See, his was a concept of fruitful void, wherein what you create is much more enticing than what you create fully. So he created instances where his characters would go to abandoned cathedrals and ruins and dark towns, and they'd find these occult volumes that would point them towards what they were looking for. He made some real ones, and then he also made some fake ones, the most famous being the Necronomicon. But his fans were so enthralled with the few references he made to this dark book that they actually went and created it themselves. There are multiple versions of that volume based off the Babylonian mythos and the Cthulhu mythos contained within the pages and has gotten so popular that the High Priest of the Church of Satan has actually said that if you want to, you can practice dark worship out of the Necronomicon, because it's all got to do with the power of belief. Let me give an example. Imagine if someone actually wrote Hogwarts A History just based off the few references that J.K. Rowling gives in the Harry Potter saga. That is what the Necronomicon is. So me and my brother trying to worship gods through that was a foolish venture, but there are always other ways.